Okay, hi there and welcome to the first in the series of new short videos looking at aspects of fiscal policy. Let's spend a few minutes looking at government spending. Now, fiscal policy involves any change in government spending, taxation, and also how much the government has to borrow each year to help achieve some of their micro and macroeconomic objectives. And we'll take a look at some of those objectives and fiscal policy in action in a separate video in this series. You'll have come across government spending before if you're familiar with the formula for aggregate demand, which is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. There are three main categories of government spending. First of all, transfer payments or welfare spending, otherwise known as social security. And this is where the government enacts a transfer from one group of taxpayers to perhaps benefit recipients. The example would be uh, the state pension or the job seekers allowance. The second category is public services, and this is sometimes called current spending or recurring spending. For example, in the police force, we'll look at an example or some examples of that in, in a second or two. And the third category is capital spending by the state. Those big, lumpy, significant investment projects such as HS2, HS3, Crossrail, uh, the London Super Sewer and other big, big investment projects. Now, in 2019, total UK government spending was over £800 billion. Of course, that's likely to be much higher in the next year or two as the economic impact of the coronavirus crisis starts to become apparent. Total spending on public services, the middle bit on this slide, such as education and the National Health Service and social care, well, that was about 22% of the value of the UK's GDP. So current spending is recurring spending. It's basically things you have to provide week in, week out, every single month of the year. You have to pay people working in the NHS. You have to provide drugs for used in public health care. Local authorities have to fill the roads and repair potholes. The army requires logistical supplies to keep their show on the road. So current government spending is essentially that day in, day out spending to actually provide and deliver public services. Governments also need to spend money on investment. So we talk about capital spending by the government. The government may actually fund it and the private sector could build a new motorway or a new bridge. So there's oftentimes a partnership between public and private sector, but it's still government capital spending in large part. For example, new equipment in the National Health Service, a major flood defence scheme in a town or city, uh, perhaps some new defence equipment for the armed forces. So take a moment here, have a think about the difference between current spending on the left, the day in day out spending and capital spending on the right, the big lumpy investment projects. Government spending is significant for most, in fact, all modern economies. Uh, some countries have a, have a very high level of government spending as a share of GDP. Uh, it's a key component of aggregate demand in terms of generating demand for goods and services and sustaining jobs. Government spending also has quite a big regional economic impact. A government, for example, might try to increase spending in areas where unemployment and per capita incomes are lower. Government spending is important oftentimes to replace the market. Perhaps the free market doesn't provide or under provides uh, public and merit goods. And the fourth aspect is really quite important and shouldn't be forgotten. That government spending can be quite a significant impact uh, can have a, a big impact on household income and the distribution of income across different parts of the population. Uh, this idea of the link between government spending and incomes is quite important. Let's take a moment to think about two aspects. One is the welfare system, the social security system. The government uh, spends in excess of £100 billion every year on the state pension. Universal credit uh, which brings together a whole series of separate welfare benefits, is another major spend by the state, um, and quite controversial as well in terms of the delays of getting universal credit to people. The government might also spend money uh, through wage subsidy. That's another form of transfer. In this case, uh, the government might transfer money to businesses who might furlough their workers during the coronavirus crisis in a bid to reduce uh, the risk of mass unemployment. And some people are now suggesting 
that uh, we might trial and experiment some form of universal basic income where the state would provide a minimum income through the welfare system to every adult and child in the UK. So government spending can have a direct effect on people's incomes. It's also important, I think, to consider the impact of the state spending on benefits in kind. So, for example, state education, providing largely free at the point of use, uh, that, that access to good education in the state sector uh, can be quite important in terms of reducing the inequality of market outcomes. Again, healthcare provided on the basis of clinical need and not on the basis of willingness to pay is a very important benefit in kind for many millions of people in the UK. And likewise, subsidised social housing provision uh, can also help to bring down the cost of rented property for many people and providing essential shelter for those without economic resources. So I think the purpose of this slide is really to say the government can have a direct effect on people's incomes through their welfare spending, but also there's a benefit in kind effect through education, healthcare and housing, although the distribution of those benefits in kind may not necessarily be as equal as people might like. Some key numbers on government spending in the UK uh, in 2019-2020, government spending was £841 billion. Pounds. That's going to rise in the next year or two. That's actually around £30,000 per household. And it's equivalent to just under 40% of the value of our national output. The three big items in government spending, healthcare, £130 billion a year, education, well over a billion pounds a week, and defence spending, just under £30 billion. Pounds. And the public spender spends about £90 billion pounds a year on capital investment, such as those new hospital, hospitals, roads and buildings. The biggest item of welfare spending is the state pension, which is £101 billion pounds per year. This chart shows the level of government spending in the UK. Follow the orange line, that's total spending. A forecast for 2019 and 2020, of course, may well be changed in the months to come. So government spending rising. Uh, tax revenues lagging a little bit behind. Can you see that tax revenues were some distance behind five or six years ago, getting slightly closer? And of course, the gap between the two, the gap is the size of the budget deficit. And we'll return to that in a separate video. But for now, thanks for joining in the first in this new series of videos on fiscal policy.